Thank you very much. Six weeks ago, I was in Mexico City, uh, and I was asked to visit uh, in order to meet with uh, people from the uh, ecosystem of entrepreneurship. And I was in DFA to really understand uh, what was happening in Mexico from an entrepreneurial perspective. I met with incubators and accelerators and entrepreneurs, venture capital, private equity, government people, uh, all to really sort of understand uh, what was going on. One of the most interesting facts that I learned was that Mexico needs a million new jobs, new high quality jobs each year to keep up with graduation rates and population growth. And yet it only produces about half of that each year. That's not a unique problem to Mexico. That's, we, have, we have similar problems in the US, we have similar problems around the world. And so what is the way that we can help to grow this global economy faster? I believe entrepreneurship is that way. And one of the big missing links in this whole equation of entrepreneurship is access to capital. And so that's where this concept of crowdfund investing comes in. And how can we grow the global economy through crowdfund investing? For me, this journey began in uh, August of 2010. I was having a series of conversations with a couple of great friends of mine, Zach Cassidy Dorian and Sherwood Neese, uh, who were partners in, uh, in, in our business together and in, in the endeavors that, we, that we've completed here so far. And we were talking about the fact that although the three of us had been successful in raising capital in the past, we have been able to um, uh, build businesses, that at this point in 2010, there was no access to capital. There was no way for us to to raise the money that we needed to raise. And so we began to be really concerned and thinking about how can we solve this problem? Uh, what are the ways we can do this? Trying to bring an entrepreneurial approach to this concept. And so as we thought about it, the way you invest, you know, you, there are these concepts called, uh, there's a website called uh, Kiva. Uh, where you're able to make microloans to entrepreneurs in the developing world, or Kickstarter, where you're able to give money to artists or uh, musicians or filmmakers who are looking to uh, make their creative expressions and be able to, to, you can become a micro patron of the arts and support them. But unfortunately, in the US and in most countries around the world, you're unable to make an investment, whether it be in equity or debt security, in a small business or a local business that you know or some other business you believe in or an entrepreneur that you believe in. It's illegal. And the reason it was illegal is because of laws written in 1933 and 1934. And they were well-intentioned at the time because it was to stop people from, from uh, buying securities that had no value because information was, was not liquid like, like it is today. And so what was crazy to us as entrepreneurs are why are we still being governed and how we can raise capital for our businesses? Uh, in 2012, uh, with laws written 77 years ago, laws that were written before the telephone was in most people's homes, before the TV was even invented. And it was controlling how we were going to raise capital and build businesses and build jobs and build innovation. Um, in 2012, in the day of, of, of the World Wide Web and, and of the real-time web. And so where rebirth comes into the story for me is in taking a very old idea and adding technology to it to give it rebirth. And that concept is in, is in crowdfund investing, where we take Web 2.0 or the social web and add capital formation to it to get Web 3.0. This ability to engage large numbers of people from my community to make small investments so that I can, as an entrepreneur, create innovation, create jobs, and help grow the economy. And so with this old idea that we layered on technology to make it new again, uh, we had to, we, knew, we, we went to lawyers and we went to experts and we said, well, this seems obvious, why can't we do it? And they said, well, these are laws that have been on the books for a long time, it's impossible to change them. They've never been changed and you can't change them. It'll take an act of Congress, that doesn't happen. And so we're entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are naive. Entrepreneurs do things that are supposed to be impossible. They do things they're not supposed to do. 
And so we sat down at my dining room table and we wrote out a framework for a law that we thought would make sense that said, how do we balance the needs of investors and entrepreneurs and regulators so that we can protect everyone, but yet allow this access to capital? And then, continuing to be naive and continuing to go against the advice of most of our friends who told us we were crazy, we started going to Washington, D.C. to talk to anybody who would listen to us and talk to about, talked about our framework for how to allow entrepreneurs to use the web to raise capital. And slowly but surely, we started to gain advocates. People listened. Uh, we took an entrepreneurial approach. We brought a solution to Washington. You know, and we, we stayed out of politics. We didn't side with one side or the other. We just sort of stayed on policy and really dealing with addressing it head on with the issues of jobs, innovation, and entrepreneurship. And the White House became a supporter. We were able to move to the House of Representatives and they passed uh, the crowdfunding bill with over 400 votes. That's over 95% of the House voting for it. Uh, very bipartisan. And then it moved to the Senate where it became part of the JOBS Act. Uh, part of a larger financial bill, and that passed. And on April 5th of this year, we were able to attend the ceremony at the White House to watch the president sign this bill. So from the time we started to the time it passed was 460 days. You know, for, for an entrepreneur, that feels like a lifetime, but in Washington, D.C., they say it's pretty quick. But um, it, we learned a lot of lessons, and, and, and really now our focus is continuing to work with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the White House, the House, and the Senate to really say, how do we make this, write all the rules for how this law will actually be in, enforced? How can we actually do this in a way that doesn't strangle this new industry before it's begun? I know where to point this. So why does this matter? For me, it's three reasons. One is, it, it's from a global perspective, it's the fact that I believe that uh, entrepreneurship is really important in, in stability, stability of countries and, 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 and social stability and social mobility. It allows for, when people are employed, when people uh, own, own shares of a company, when they're, when, when they're creating, whether that be commercially or creatively for creativity itself, they're engaged in their lives, they're engaged in society, and they're engaged in productive activities. That's good for stability in our, in our society. Number two, I live in San Francisco now, um, but I grew up in a small town in Louisiana, not about three hours from New Orleans. And while living in San Francisco, it's easy to, for people to think there's lots of access to capital, lots of access to, to investors. But I know from my experience growing up that that's not the case, that most of America doesn't have access to capital. There are really only about three cities in the U.S. where most venture capital or private equity happens, New York, San Francisco, and Boston. Outside of those places, I, you know, and I refuse to believe that all the smart people in the U.S. live in those three cities. You know, I mean, there are people from all over. There are tons of great entrepreneurs, smart, creative, intelligent people around the U.S. and around the world who just need access to capital and can get that from their communities. And I want to try to make that happen so that they're able to access their communities to raise that capital. And third is my friend Stephanie. My friend Stephanie opened a, an online chocolate business. It was fantastic chocolate. And she sold really, really well online. She then opened her own store uh, in San Francisco and began to be a success in the physical store as well. But then times changed and uh, her circumstances changed, and she needed investors, and she needed bank loans, and there were none to be had, even with a successful and profitable business. And so she had to close. And I don't really want any more Stephanie stories. I want, I want businesses that are successful to be able to succeed and continue succeeding with the help of their communities. Get this right eventually. So will it work? Will it really work? Will people really invest in their communities? So let me tell you first how I think it will work and how it's designed to work, and then we'll talk about will it. 
The way this will work is much like Kickstarter, if you're familiar with it. You'll go to a uh, Securities and Exchange Commission controlled and regulated website. You as an entrepreneur will build a profile. You will submit to a background check and a securities fraud check and a criminal background check. You will put your documentation for your company online. You'll talk about what your business is, what it does, what, how much money you need, how much of your company are you willing to give up, or if it's a loan, what interest rate are you willing to, uh, to pay, and then what you're going to use the money for. And you're going to tell how much money you need. And the way we wrote the law in the U.S. is you have to reach your funding goal in order to receive any money. So if you get 99% of the way there, you still get nothing because you have to reach your goal. Then uh, you will then go out to your community and you will answer their questions and you will, and you will raise the money. So will it work? I believe it will. Will people, will everyone succeed at it? No. Will the majority of your people succeed at it? No, they won't. With, with Kickstarter and the donation-based sites, only 40% of those campaigns are successful. And I'm afraid that there may be, that number may be smaller with crowdfund investing. But I believe that the, pe but the numbers of people who will be successful will be staggering. Last year in the US, only 3,700 businesses were funded by venture capital. That's about 70 per state. What if we could have 500 new businesses per state in the US funded by crowdfunding investing? It would be phenomenal. So I really believe there's an opportunity for this to work, and I believe that it will be successful. One of the other reasons is really that it's, it's, it's looking at how we can engage communities. And many times when people think of community, they think of geographic. And that's very true. I think there are others, though, that are really important. What are your communities of origin, your communities of interest, your communities of diaspora? Uh, we're we're uh, talking with the World Bank right now about a project where they are uh, looking at these concepts from a climate change perspective, from a climate impact perspective, from a diaspora perspective, how crowdfund investing can play a role in empowering projects, in helping projects that they take on become part of a community. And I think that, you know, thinking about how we can engage all these different communities, and that's where the technology comes in. It allows you to really engage all of these other communities. Because I really believe that, you know, you can have lots of great ideas, you can have smart entrepreneurs, but what it comes down to is you need a catalyst, and that catalyst is capital. That catalyst is, is, is money to fund this, the beginning and the growth of businesses. And so I really believe that communities can come together and they can support entrepreneurs, and they can support small business people, and large businesses in their community for that matter, that need the capital to grow and expand. Because for me, this is what it's all about. It's all about how we can foster innovation, how we can foster entrepreneurship, and how we can create jobs. I think those are, those are critically important things. And, I, and what I really want is for us to be able to do those things anywhere in the world. Thank you very much.